You've talked a little bit about the brain science, when, what happens to yeah. a brain seeking and getting revenge. Yeah. What happens to a brain seeking uh, or plotting forgiveness and giving forgiveness? Yeah. The, 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 the neuroscience is a little more speculative here, but there are some really interesting hints. Um, one of them is that uh, there, are, there are three kinds of information. And I, th I really do think one day we're going to find a class of neurons that integrate three kinds of information from, from outside in the world. One is, uh, is the person who harmed you someone that you feel sorry for? So I think that it, forgiveness turns on empathy or compassion. If you feel sorry for someone, maybe because you've seen them suffer, or you've seen them in pain, or you feel like they've been punished enough and it's time to kind of let them off the mat, that will favor the development of forgiveness. The second thing is value. I mean, that same brain system we were talking about that promises reward if you just, if you just drop the hammer on this person who's harmed you, that same brain system is the same system that says, this is a, I'm, I stand to get something from this person doing well, right? So that same brain system, I believe, is going to, we're going to find has inputs into the sort of forgiveness system. And, and then the final one, which is really important, is, is safety. When people feel, a, uh, when they don't feel anxiety around someone who's harmed them, when they're not worried about being harmed a second time, when they feel secure, um, that also is going to favor the development of forgiveness. So what I expect to see, and, and again, just the hints are there right now, is that when someone's plotting forgiveness, uh, you know, as, as, which is a great way to put it, um, we're going to see activity in those, the, the three systems that govern those kind of psychological experiences. Interesting. And animal, uh, studies of animals have also showed, uh, I think, less brain science, but more cortisol and, and, yeah. and stress hormones and things like that. The studies of animals have shown that forgiveness or getting and, and giving forgiveness reduces their stress, right? Yeah. Can you talk about that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, that's great stuff. I, you know, when, you, when you've had a conflict with somebody who's harmed you, one of, the, one of the questions left on the table is, does this person want to harm you again? Mm -hmm. So you see this, you see this in non-human primates, you see this in human primates, you see this in little, little children even. After, they, after there's been a conflict or uh, an aggressive episode, um, pe people's cortisol goes way up. And cortisol is this stress hormone that's associated with social threat. When people are worried about who, who's going to harm them and someone is disposed to harm them, cortisol goes through the roof. Now, after, uh, baboons are a great example of this. Um, if baboons have a conciliatory kind of contact with each other after conflict, which is really common, by the way, uh, one of the great insights from primatology over the last 20 years has been that um, individuals that have val relationship value to each other, after they've had a conflict, go out of their way to have friendly physical contact after the conflict. They have a motivation to repair those relationships. And they, a lot of how they do it is through grooming, right? It's not the only, only gesture they use, but, but almost all of them use grooming. And once they start to engage in this grooming behavior, right, it has an, it has an anxiety reducing effect and cortisol goes back down. So you see, and again, you see this in little kids, you see this in uh, adults, uh, humans, and you see it in non-human primates. So along with forgiveness, we see reductions in fear, reductions in insecurity about the future. I'll just ask one other question, and then we're going to go ahead and open, um, open up to the floor. But I guess the, uh, the wrap-up question is, very bluntly put, so what, mm. OK? Forgiveness and revenge are, are, you know, normal parts of being human, but what does that knowledge get us? Um, can it in any way help us to reduce inner city violence or warfare? How about, you know, conflicts in the workplace yeah. or in marriage? What, what are the practical implications of this? For, for me, they come down to understanding those three ingredients, right? Safety, value, and compassion or careworthiness. So, we know from lots and lots of laboratory bench science that people forgive people who have made themselves seem valuable, um, who have made themselves seem safe, and who seem worthy of care, or they, they, seem, they, they elicit compassion. So what I 
what I've wanted to do, and I, and, and I, I, I talk about in, in Beyond Revenge quite a bit, is how do you take those three concepts and then go change your sphere of influence so that those ingredients are easier for a victim to get after they've been harmed by somebody. So a lot of it, is, so, so a lot of it can be just thinking about interpersonal relationships. This is how apologies work. This is how compensation works. This is why when you scratch somebody's car and they're angry at you and you offer to pay for the damages, they can't be mad at you anymore. You've undone the damage, right? Um, and you've also shown yourself to be safe and uh, worthy of care and, 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 and of value to them. But can you design your workplace so that somebody who has grievances can know how do you get safety how do you restore relationship value, and how do you experience compassion for somebody in the workplace? Uh, I, th I think, just to, give, just to give one example that I use a lot, um, every, every owner of a small business of, of at least, I guess, 18 people um, has to have a, an employee manual, right? Uh, um, an employee manual should explain what a worker who's being bullied or bothered in the workplace systematically by a coworker can do to address that grievance. Because if the grievance isn't addressed, if there isn't a clear path to show them, how do I get safety? How do I endow this coworker relationship with the value that's been kind of drained away by all this conflict? And how do I feel some goodwill for this person again? What you get is revenge. I mean, you get, you get alienation from the coworker, you get them retaliating against, against each other, and, then the be, and, in, and in the best case, some good worker leaves your company. That's the best case. You know, the worst case is uh, you know, the, the lid is blown off of, of, this, of this workplace and nobody can work anymore. So I think these are really scalable concepts, right? Um, I think they can be used to, uh, Here's an idea that I would love for someone to tell me the Achilles, uh, I'd love to know what the Achilles heel is in this, this idea. Why can't we find two groups who have been in conflict and offer micro grants, right? This is a big deal in social entrepreneurism right now. But make these micro grants to in entrepreneurs, small scale business people, um, in, in remote areas, give them $100, okay, to start their businesses up. But make another $50 available to them if they will establish a partnership with someone from another conflict group, from, from the group on the other side of the conflict. So you've got two entrepreneurs, one from, either, one from both of these conflict groups. They've got $100 to start their businesses with. What if you each made them, made available another 50% of that if they would work together to, in, the, in this, in the interest of making money, right? Mm -hmm. So you endow the relationship with value. You don't ask them to start loving each other again. You just make it good for business for them to establish a relationship where they have to interact with each other, they have to <coughs> solve problems together, they have to, um, they have to co forge common goals. And I know there are all kinds of externalities you have to deal with there. You know, you have to mm -hmm. think about envy, you have to think about how this is dealt with back in your group that you live with. And I know, I know there are complications, but on, on the face of it, I want to know why something like that doesn't work. And, and I, I'm, I lo would love for, I'm, I'm ready to be, to be provided with that answer because no one's given it to me yet. Maybe we can start with the Sunnis and the Shias in Iraq. Um, but no, I'm just joking. No, this, is, this has been great. Mike, thank you so much. Pleasure. This is absolutely terrific.